Coming up on this Wednesday edition of Daybreak, South Korea and the United States kick off a two-day joint naval drill amid simmering tensions on the Korean peninsula. As Korea's economy-related agencies lay out their reform plans for the new year, President Park Geun-hye reiterates the need for sweeping public sector reform before it's too late. Plus, as the victims of the terror attacks in France are laid to rest, new footage has emerged of the gunmen moments after their attack on the Charlie Hebdo offices in Paris. Daybreak begins now. Hello and thanks for joining us to our viewers around the world. It's 6 a.m. on Wednesday, January 14th here in Seoul. I'm Mark Broom and you're tuned in to Daybreak. Our top story this morning, South Korea and the United States kicked off a two-day joint naval drill. On Tuesday, the Allies moved ahead as planned, despite North Korea saying it would return to talks if the military exercises uh, such as this one were cancelled. Kim Hyun-bin reports. Two U.S. Aegis destroyers, including the 9,200-ton USS Mustin, are currently in the East Sea for a joint training with South Korea's 3,200-ton Aegis destroyer, Kwangyeto the Great. This is their first military training since North Korea called for a stop to the joint military exercises, as one of the conditions for the two Koreas to engage in dialogue. Seoul and Washington say their drills are defensive in nature, but North Korea is not convinced. Pyongyang characterizes the drills as a rehearsal for a northward invasion. And instead of responding to South Korea's calls on numerous occasions to come to the negotiating table, North Korea continues with its nuclear threats. The regime's state-run newspaper Nuo Dong Shinmun said on Tuesday that Pyongyang is pursuing nuclear economic development at the same time, and went on to say the regime will follow its military first policy to the very end while continuing to develop as nuclear capabilities. With Seoul and Washington not budging from the joint military drills and vowing to go ahead with the large-scale joint training set for March, I was turned to how that's going to affect the prospects of inter-Korean dialogue. As for the latest, South Korean President Park Geun-hye reached out to North Korea once again on Monday in her New Year's press conference, offering talks with no preconditions. Kim Hyun-bin, Arirang News. The top U.S. official on North Korea has stated that anyone that supports blacklisted North Korean entities and individuals will also run the risk of U.S. financial sanctions. Speaking at a House Foreign Affairs Committee briefing on Tuesday, Ambassador Sung Kim said Washington's latest sanctions on North Korea are aimed at increasing the cost of misbehavior and lowering the revenues the regime is able to funnel to its illicit nuclear and ballistic missile programs. Now, the U.S. government slapped fresh sanctions on North Korea recently in response to the regime's alleged cyber attack on Sony Pictures. Responding to critics who say the sanctions don't go far enough, Kim said the latest measures are very strong as they'll allow Washington to target anyone that tries to provide material support to the North. Despite these strong words, the U.S. official added that Washington remains open to holding talks with North Korea on its nuclear weapons program. President Park Geun-hye gathered together the nation's top economic-related ministers and agency heads on Tuesday to hear about how they plan to strengthen Korea's economic fundamentals. Our Lee ji has more. Opening a joint briefing to the president by six economy-related ministries and agencies, Finance Minister Choi kyung hwan stressed the importance of overhauling the public sector as the first step in revitalizing the Korean economy, stressing that 2015 is the golden time for structural reforms and innovation. Top economic policymakers laid out plans for strengthening the nation's economic fundamentals and balancing domestic demand and exports. 
The government plans to focus on reforms in the four sectors of labor, finance, the public sector and education this year. The government said its efforts last year set the stage for implementing the president's three-year economic reform plan, with its agencies reducing their debt by $22 billion to surpass the initial goal by about $4 billion. Seoul will keep reducing government debt, restructure pension schemes for civil servants, and push forward with other public sector overhauls in the hope of leading reforms in other sectors. For example, the labor ministry will promote salaries based on their performance, not seniority. The government will also devise safety net measures for temporary workers to improve working conditions. To better cater to investors in the financial sector, the government will facilitate venture capital projects and prepare an implementation plan for the second phase of reforms. University, for their parts, will now be focused on providing more practical education, and designated colleges will now have to match their student quotas with market demand so that students can get hired upon graduation. Lee Jun, Arirang News. And President Park Geun-hye also says the public sector. Uh, should lead reforms in the country, receiving reports from government ministries on Tuesday. She said efforts made last year to reduce debt held by public institutions fell well short of expectations. She urged officials to carry out a second phase of reforms in the new year. To help Koreans actually feel the effects of her economic plans, President Park called on the ministries to work together and generate a synergy effect amongst themselves. Now, one of Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe's closest aides is urging Korea to not attach any preconditions to a possible bilateral summit between the two countries. Abe's chief cabinet secretary, Yoshihide Suga, said on Tuesday that the issue of Japan's sexual enslavement of Korean women before and during World War II should not stand in the way of a potential summit. His remarks came a day after President Park and Hay told reporters that she was open to holding a summit with Abe. President Park added, however, that in order for a summit to be productive, the sex slavery issue must first be addressed. Speaking on the issue on Tuesday, Suga said Japan maintains its stance that it should not be made into a political and diplomatic issue. We start before the sun rises to bring you the latest stories out of Korea. We also lead the way with important global coverage. Stay on the pulse of what is happening with Daybreak. Now, in economic news, and Korea's export prices dropped to a seven-year low last year due to falling global oil prices and the strengthening Korean won. The Bank of Korea says export prices went down 6% in 2014 from the previous year. A fall in export prices means exporters earn that much less when shipping out the same amount of products. But last year, import prices fell by a bigger margin than export prices, giving local exporters some degree of leeway. Import prices dropped 7.5% last year from 2013. Microsoft has enjoyed a virtual monopoly in supplying a critical security feature for online shopping in Korea for more than two decades now, but that's about to end. Starting as early as March, shoppers on Korean websites will no longer have to install a Microsoft security program called ActiveX. Connie Kim reports. Many would say it's been a long time coming, but online shoppers in Korea will soon be able to get things much more easily. For starters, the government will no longer require shoppers to install a Microsoft-developed authentication program just to buy something online under a plan to be introduced as early as March. The ActiveX plugin, which only works on Internet Explorer, has been a must-have for shoppers, making a purchase of over 300,000 won, roughly 275 U.S. dollars. The system was first implemented in 1999 to ensure safe online payments, but was often criticized for being slow and having poor web compatibility, limiting access to online shopping. Under proposed changes, it'll make online transaction procedures much simpler, 
and let shoppers using other internet browsers such as Firefox, Chrome, or Safari. The clunky online shopping requirement in Korea was even pointed out by President Park Geun-hye herself during her New Year's press conference on Monday. ActiveX와 같은 이런 낡은 규제에 안주한 결과 국내 소비자의 해외 직구는 폭발적으로 느는데 해외 소비자의 국내 역직구는 걸음마 수준입니다. With ActiveX on the way out and shoppers having an easier time buying things from Korea-based websites, Korean online retailers hope the country will start turning its e-commerce deficit around. Foreign online purchases of Korean goods are expected at $27.7 million, or 1.5 percent of Koreans' online purchases of foreign goods last year. Connie Kim, Arirang News. Now, Koreans are known to pay top dollar for imported groceries and food products, even double or triple the prices of other countries, in fact. But with FTAs in effect, some now for many years, lots of people are wondering why they have to pay so much more. Our Gwon Suwa reports. What do coffee, wine and cheese in Korea have in common? They are all popular imports and they are expensive. In fact, a recent survey of 13 major countries revealed that these three products are pulling the largest amount of money out of Korean consumers' pockets. According to Consumers Korea, a Starbucks Americano costs more than 4,000 won in Korea, or roughly 3 U.S. dollars and 80 cents. You'll get the same coffee indulgence for around $2.30 at a Starbucks in the United States. But it's not all that shocking, considering that most Korean brands sell their coffee for similar prices, as coffee consumption has skyrocketed in recent years. The industry is now estimated to be worth around 5.7 billion U.S. dollars. Another product stands out, too. A bottle of Montes Alpha premium wine from Chile sells for around $39 on Korean shelves, nearly double the price in Australia. And what goes well with the beverage? Cheese. But this, too, comes at a high price for Koreans. The Laughing Cow, a famous processed cheese product from France, can be bought in Korea for over $4, which is very expensive compared to what the French have to pay, a mere dollar and 30 cents. The list goes on. Eight out of 42 imported products were found to be the most expensive in Korea, and 11 products were ranked second most expensive. This, despite Korea's efforts to conclude numerous free trade agreements in recent years. Consumers Korea points to the country's distribution system as the reason for the high prices and says that for the general public to benefit from FTAs, the system will need a revision. Kwonsoa. Arirang News. Now, signs of an economic turnaround in the United States are raising the stakes for this year's North American International Auto Show in Detroit. And uh, shining debuts are in store for dozens of new models in what promises to be a great event in America's Motor City. Kim Jion reports. The economic recovery in the United States and tumbling oil prices are having a profound impact on the latest trends at this year's North American International Auto Show in Detroit. Convertibles are making a comeback, mainly due to stronger consumer spending as Americans enjoy the fruits of the strengthening economy. Well, we got a lot of exciting products. So, you know, we've got three new six series behind us. Uh, the U.S. market is the largest one for these cars. The convertible, around 60-odd percent of all of those that we sell are in the United uh, States. So I think that will be a, a very strong product uh, during the year. Another popular item that has a firm place in the hearts of North American drivers is a pickup truck. As soon as the oil prices drop, they automatically go back to what they're comfortable with. So I think as long as prices stay low, the potential for SUVs and trucks is uh, probably better than we've seen in you know, several years.
Despite the falling oil prices, automakers are being pressured to develop more fuel-efficient models as more stringent environment rules are being put in place around the world. That's why electric and hybrid models are also popular this year. General Motors will debut a new version of its plug-in hybrid Chevrolet Volt, the model's first update in five years. Korea's Hyundai Motor will also reveal a new hybrid version of its Sonata sedan. The North American International Auto Show opens to the public on Saturday and runs through January 25th at Detroit's Kobu Center. Kim Jung, Arirang News. Time now for a look through the global headlines. We're following this Wednesday morning from Seoul, Korea. We're going to turn to Eunice Kim, standing by at the News Center for the stories. Good morning, Eunice. And good morning to you, Mark. New footage has surfaced showing the moments after the Charlie Hebdo gunman walked out of the satirist magazine last week after shooting dead 11 people in cold blood. The amateur video shot from a rooftop location shows two masked men, presumably the Kawachi brothers, walking calmly back to their black getaway car. Both reload their rifles as one man is heard yelling out, we have avenged the Prophet Muhammad, we have killed Charlie Hebdo. As the men approach a tight alleyway in their Citron, they're blocked by a police car but get through after opening fire. Meanwhile, the terror alert remains at its highest level in Paris as authorities sweep the city for clues and possible accomplices to the three Islamist suspects killed last week. French police say they are probing a Muslim Frenchman arrested in Bulgaria on January 1st who had links to one of the Kawachi brothers. 29-year-old Fritz Jolie Joaquin was initially detained on allegations that he had kidnapped his three-year-old son, but a court in Paris issued a second European arrest warrant on him on Monday. Reports say he told a hearing on Tuesday he was old friends with Sharif Kawachi, but could not be held responsible for their actions. High-level officials in Paris honored three police officers killed in the line of duty in last week's terror attacks, two at the offices of Charlie Hebdo and one policewoman who was shot while directing traffic. French President Francois Hollande presented them with the Legion of Honor, saying they had died so that we could live in freedom. Simultaneously in Israel, thousands mourned the passing of four Jewish Frenchmen gunned down in an attack at a kosher supermarket on Friday. Their bodies were brought to Jerusalem to be buried. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu underlined that the murderers were not enemies of the Jewish people alone, but that of all humanity. France is home to 550,000 Jews. 7,000 are said to have emigrated to Israel last year amid concerns for their safety. Turning now to the United States, President Barack Obama is said to be preparing a plan to boost cybersecurity amid news of major hack attacks against companies like Sony Pictures. Cybersecurity has jumped to the top of his agenda this year, and the White House is said to have already discussed the issue with leaders of the Republican-held Congress, where related bills will be debated and potentially passed. Among those in consideration are offering liability protection to companies that quickly share information about cyber attacks and also new powers for law enforcement to investigate and prosecute cybercrime. Pope Francis has begun his tour through Asian nations, beginning with a visit to Sri Lanka. It is the first time the majority Buddhist Southeast Asian nation has hosted a pontiff since the end of a war in 2009. Pope Francis called for the pursuit of truth, not for the sake of opening old wounds, but rather as a necessary means of promoting justice, healing and unity. Sri Lanka is still dealing with the effects of a long civil war in which Tamil rebels are accused of atrocities.
And a good Wednesday morning to you all as we kick things off with the 2015 Asian Cup where the Korean national football team found themselves in a bit of a pickle with Son Heung Min and two other starters out with the flu and Vice Captain Lee Chung Young returned to Korea after injuring his ankle going into their second group stage match against Kuwait. But no worries, says Nam Tae who heads in the only goal to match in the 35th minute, giving the Taegook Warriors the 1 0 lead and the win, giving the national team of, uh, advancing to the quarterfinals. Despite the lack of offense for the second straight match, the defense continues to shut it down as they're set to face off against the host nation Australia on Saturday. Now, aside from Korea's 1-0 win over Kuwait on Tuesday, the other major sports news in the nation was reports of Kang Jong-ho agreeing to a major league deal with the Pittsburgh Pirates. But what's next for Korea's top shortstop? Now, despite reports that the 28-year-old have agreed to a four-year deal worth $16 million plus an option for a fifth year, it's not guaranteed that he'll be a starting infielder for the Pirates just yet. And with the middle infield currently being occupied by Jordy Mercer at short and Neil Walker at second, Kang Jong-ho must prove himself to be a defensive player during spring camp in order to cement himself as a starter. Now while Kang Jong-ho hopes to swing for the fences in the majors, Korea's Pae Sang-moon was swinging away at the Hyundai Tournament of Champions despite the ongoing issue with his military service. And it seemed like the off-the-field distractions were an issue with the 28-year-old as he went into the final round of the event, time for third, but struggled a bit in the front nine to finish with 18 on the par overall, good for sixth place. Meanwhile, brilliant final round for American Patrick Reed, who came back to beat Jimmy Walker after a sudden-death playoff hold to win the 2015 Hyundai Tournament of Champions. Now, while golf is one of the more popular hobby sports here in the nation, three cushion is another popular sport. And after the latest world ranking, the popularity of the sport might grow even more. Now, 38-year-old Choi Sung Won, who became the first Korean to win the three cushion world championship last year, became the first Korean to top the three cushion world ranking as well, as he took over Eddie Merck's spot for the number one ranking. Meanwhile, Choi Sung Won is set to compete in the Three Cushion Asian Championship from January 20th to the 22nd in Seoul. And that's going to wrap it up for me. This has been SJ. Have a great rest of the day and see you guys again for your sports needs. Good morning. Now today's forecast to be another mild winter day. Temperature readings will go up 4 to 6 degrees higher than the seasonal averages, reaching similar to what we had yesterday, a hovering 5 in the upper parts and double digits in many parts in the southern provinces. But we won't see the clear skies today. Clouds will be hanging around the peninsula all day long and as we can see rain clouds are passing by down Jeju Island so people in Jeju will see 5 to 20 millimeters of rainfall all day long and possibly it could linger into tomorrow morning and with that in mind let's take a closer look at the readings for today now the low in Seoul is kicking off at minus two and that's about three degrees higher than yesterday then the high will jump up to six while Daegu and Gwangju should peak at nine and eight and Busan will reach ten this afternoon now let's see how other regions are looking uh, it looks like Jeju Island will rise to eleven later on while Daegu and Tukto will be getting up to seven. Now that's all for Korea, and here's the international weather for viewers around the world.
Well, on that note, we're going to leave it for now. Korea Today is coming up at the top of the hour, 7 a.m. Korea time. Have a wonderful day. Goodbye.